Welcome to another ballpark tutorial. Today we're going to go over the best practices of working with Figma and ballpark. So we're going to go through the easiest way to make sure that your Figma prototypes load really quickly for your participants and even when you're um, working from a large file. So to give you a bit of background, even if you only select a few screens in your prototype that are using frames from Figma, Figma will load the entire file to support that prototype that you send to people or that you place in your ballpark test. That means that if you're working with hundreds of screens, dozens of pages, in the background, your participant will end up loading that on their device. And when you're working on a mobile device, that isn't very fun for them. And it could lead to drop off and people no longer um, taking part in your uh, survey or test. So to give an example here, I've got a large Figma file with few hundred screens on multiple pages if I load it up you can see that it takes maybe five to ten seconds to load if I'm a participant on a older device or a mobile it will take even longer so I've got lots and lots of screens here across lots of pages and I've got a prototype and the prototype is only three screens and just to show you what happens when I hit play So even though there's three screens, you know, you wait a few seconds for that to load. But what will happen is because I've already loaded the file, it's naturally a bit quicker for me. But for a participant, they'll have to load in the file before they can get the prototype. So it will take a long time. Um, so what I want to do is I want to create a new file. So I only have the frames that I need to test with rather than everything else, which is included within the file. So all of the components, all of the pages, I don't need all that. I just need to test these three screens. So what I can do now is click on uh, the Figma icon, go to new design file, and head back, grab these, copy, head to the new file, and paste. And now they've loaded in. I've got a very clean file with just the frames that I need that are already prototyped. So that means um, when I share this in Ballpark and with my participants for a step, uh, it will load really quickly. So that is the easiest way to make sure that Ballpark performs really well and also your participants get a great experience. So highly recommend using this method as your first, um, your kind of first action when, when working with a large Figma file. Another method to ensure that your participants get a really good experience with fast loading prototypes is to compress large Im images within your prototypes. So large images will naturally take up a lot of bandwidth and especially when those participants are on mobile devices, they may even run into device memory issues. Um, and with iOS and Android, there is a limit to the mobile browser's ability to load in large images as well. So if you're working with huge screens, um, those are gonna cause problems. So one of the things we really recommend doing is compressing your images using either some of the free uh, plugins available in the Figma Community Store. So if you head into the Figma Store, um, Figma Community um, area and type in Compress, you'll see that you'll get a ton of options around um, compressing images. Um, the one we've gone for in this example is Downsize. Uh, it's very easy to install and uh, to get running. So you go into your um, Figma file and once you've installed it, you'll see it available on the bottom right hand side. You can choose the compression quality. Now it's likely that your participants won't really care if things are super pixel perfect and high fidelity. Um, your aim is probably just to check the usability and whether the flows make sense rather than the detail of you know, the uh, background images or stock photos. So in this case, just gonna compress these three images and with a lot of these tools, they also do a lot of lossless compression. So you don't really notice um, the compression in the end result. So you can see I shaved off uh, over 20% of the file size of these PNGs that I'm using inside of this Figma file, which is great just for just a couple of clicks. And a lot of these tools um, do lossless compression so you don't really notice any of the um, the quality changing as you zoom in and 
you know, as I mentioned before, it's very unlikely that your participants will care about that level of detail as well. The main thing is to give them a good experience. Another tool which we use over in Ballpark is TinyPNG, which is a really good web-based um, compression tool where you can drag and drop images in to the browser and it will run some compression on them. And if you're a Mac user, we really recommend ImageOptim, awesome tool that you run on your Mac, you just drag the Im images in and it will run compression on them, whether they're PNGs or JPEGs. So um, some really good methods there to ensure that your Figma files and your prototypes are very lean and able to be tested without any issues from, with your participants. So another check you might wanna do before sending out your test uh, or your surveys to people that include Figma prototypes is to make sure that the browser requirements match the participants that you plan on testing with. Now, we realize this isn't possible. You might be sending it out through Twitter. You might be doing an email blast to hundreds or thousands of people and you can't check if they all use a certain browser um, or device. But just to have in mind, if some of these things don't quite fit your target audience, um, it's, it's a good thing to have in mind. So Figma makes this publicly available on their help center. So you can go and check um, which browsers are supported. Um, but more importantly is uh, the mobile support, which is a bit different from the browser support. There's a lot more restrictions on a mobile browser than there are on a desktop browser. And as I mentioned earlier on in the video, certain devices have limits on memory when it comes to how images are viewed in the browser. And in the case of iOS and Android, they may either time out crash the phone or even just display a blank image. Um, so those are things we've seen for very, very large prototypes. So those things to be aware of. Um, so check this page out and see if it helps. Another thing to check uh, before you send out your test to participants is whether Figma is up and doesn't have any incidents. Um, so this is a page that Figma make available publicly and you can go to at status.figma.com and also if they have any planned maintenance you don't want that to coincide with when you're researching so just to make sure that those things aren't happening check out this page and it's really really useful to see if anything's going on that may impact the participant experience. And that's about it for this tutorial if you have any more questions about Ballpark feel free to reach out to us using the information on the screen now.